Hello everyone, this is Pete. And in this video, I'd like to address another question that was posed to me about how to drill holes into the side of a disc. But the holes can be at crazy orientations. They're not necessarily normal about the radial surface. So I just wanted to give you an, an example of what I'm talking about. Here are a couple of holes drilled into the edge of a disc, but they're not normal to the surface. And so there's a couple different ways that I can do it. And just want to pass these along as a tip for you today in case you ever have to drill holes like these. Now to save a little bit of time, I've already built the sketch and the design <clears throat> and I've also created the parameters. So you can feel free to go ahead if you're following along or wanted to build your own. You go ahead and see those parameters, see the shape. And I'm gonna add a little bit of a twist just so you can kind of see a little bit of a difference between the different, whoops, the different methodologies that I'm going to employ today. Oh, grab that dimension one more time. Just want to grab the dimension from here to here and I'll put a 0.25 and you'll see why I do that in a little bit. So I'll go ahead and extrude the disc and <clears throat> I've actually applied a parameter for thickness, so I'll just grab that one, hit OK. And then we're also going to do an offset plane from the bottom. And we'll grab the whole plane. That was just in case it's not centered. I can apply the holes at any location on that plane. So <clears throat> creating the sketch. And the reason I'm creating a sketch is I can grab the orientation that I need from the design. So I will go ahead and expose the visibility of the sketch and <clears throat> using my projection tool I can go ahead and reach through there and grab different shapes. If you don't see the shape that you want you can kind of get in the area and do a select other and you should be able to find it or if you just leave your mouse cursor hold long enough you can grab it. So either way, if you're really having a hard time though, you can always come up here and switch it to the wireframe with hidden edges and then that should allow you to grab those shapes more easily. And I'm also going to zoom in here and I'm going to grab that point. Cool. So I'll go ahead and finish the sketch and I'll just kind of leave it in this wireframe for now so you can kind of see how I'm going to formulate the holes. But one of the placement options for holes is to use work geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and grab these intersections, grab that surface again, and then I'm also going to create a point using that projected point. And we'll get into that in a little bit, but now I have one work point two work points and then a third one that's kind of hidden inside that surface. And then we also need work axes. So this is relatively straightforward. We just have to find the axis and it will produce that. Or as I said, you could right click on it, select other, and we find that curve. So now we've got our axes. We'll go ahead and toggle it back to the shaded view and let's apply a hole. So in here, I've already kind of got this configured. It found my sketch, so I could get rid of that sketch point if I need to. But I'll go ahead and grab this point and this point, and it wants to drill a hole. So sometimes it drills it the wrong way, and I'm gonna turn off some of my options here so we can kind of talk through what the hole needs to do. So oftentimes when we drill a hole, it'll be at some all or some distance and we want a specific distance we can come over to the distance option and we can choose the measure because I, I drew that sketch line in and I want to be able to use that sketch line to control the length so I just find that curve again and now it's going to be exactly that length but you can see in the preview it's not going to be quite right so if I hit, and I actually had 
that <coughs> spot face turned on, but you can see it's kind of like almost halvesy the hole. So just to see what that looks like, it, it's not correct. <laughs> That's probably not going to work. So what we can do is when we build the hole, there's a couple of options to consider here. Number one is to add a seat into it. This will give us a little bit more of an option for putting the tap in. And an option that was added just a couple versions back in Inventor is this extend start. And that gets rid of all the material in between myself and the hole. So, so far so good, but you can see it's still not perfect. So what I want to do is on this next hole, instead of choosing this point, or even that one, let's get rid of that selection, I can, if I go back to my view and I switch it back to the wireframe, I can choose a different point and then the axis, and it actually starts further into the design. So this might even be better to get consistent threading and then instead of my distance I'm going to say 2 and then I can actually choose this other hole and so I can drill to that hole. Again I'm using the spot face option and the extended start but with the advantage of using a work point that's inside is now when I switch back to my visual style I actually can get a very consistent threading for my tab. So that's all I did was just using that sketch point that's offset a little bit in from the edge makes it a much more consistent thread and you'll get better fitting performance. So you don't have to just drill holes that are normal to a curved surface. You can using sketches and then the on point orientation for your holes. You can create holes at really any angle that you need. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Have a blessed day.